Mara, so great to be here with you today. Awesome, it's great to be here. So the crypto world is very confusing for a lot of people. So I want you to break it down for me in the simplest of terms. What does your company do? So maybe let's start from the beginning to help break down the concepts. Um, so public blockchains are really public goods that anyone can participate in and contribute to. They're open source technologies. Our company is really focused on enabling people in contributing and participating in networks. And one of the most important things when you think about what a blockchain really does, which is store and distribute data that is, you know, cohesive and, you know, may preserves integrity across different participants in a network. The most important thing is to make sure it's secure so that it cannot be corrupted, it cannot be hacked. There's two types of ways in which blockchains maintain security. It's either through um, the you know, contribution of computing power, it's called proof of work, really popular blockchains like Bitcoin use that system to preserve security, and anyone can really you know, spin up a miner or contribute their computing power to support the network and in return uh, earn rewards for doing so. In modern, more modern blockchains, like Ethereum, which is actually the second largest blockchain that exists today, you have a mechanism that is called staking. It's a mechanism by which um, a user can lock up their Ethereum or their cryptocurrency, and in return, they receive rewards for securing the network. Our technology enables a very broad set of participants to very safely and accessibly access and contribute to the technology. When you say like locking it, is it kind of like putting you know money into a bank or a savings account like that? It's very similar. You can think of it as analogous to you know having your dollars in a bank account and receiving interest uh, for holding it there because your bank actually does things with that dollar. It puts it to use. When you hold Ethereum or you hold a cryptocurrency and you want to contribute to security, locking it up in the network has the same effect. You provide security and in return you get rewards. So prominent blockchains like Ethereum, for example, today issue rewards at a rate of you know, 3.5 or so percent. Mm -hmm. And so it's a really exciting way for people to start becoming part of a network to contribute to it. And that's quite exciting. So that's really the focus that we've taken. So take me back to the beginning. What was your founding story? I think way beginning, probably just for a little bit of context on myself. Um, I grew up super internationally, moved around a lot as a kid. Uh, lived in different countries, I guess got very used to starting things over and, you know, being adaptive. And I think that in many ways, you know, sort of contributed um, to me getting excited and also feeling comfortable starting projects and, and also businesses today. Um, I ended up getting very interested in Web3 or in crypto. I want to say just shortly after coming out of college, I'd studied economics. I was really interested in the concept of value distribution and value creation and how different systems can impact how value is created and how it's effectively distributed. Um, and as someone who's grown up with the internet, I you know, was effectively part of a generation that is very used to you know, using computers and using the internet and also seeing its impact on the world. I think my mom always jokes, there's like a photo of me wearing pampers, turning on an old Macintosh. <laughs> and so I got very used to that. Um, and I think one of the things that really drew me to this space is that inherently the promise of having this global computer that allows users, contributors, um, and the network itself to distribute value in a meaningful way was really interesting for me, you know, coming out of a generation that has been so used to using the internet on a daily basis. And so, you know, in, in many ways, Web3 is really there to revolutionize and reduce the cost and the distribution uh, of value on the internet. And that's a quite interesting promise. So you've had quite a history in the, the crypto world. Can you walk me through uh, your background before founding this company? Absolutely. I've worked full time in this space about seven years now, uh, which is many years in crypto. <laughs> um, I actually um, had, as I mentioned, you know, gotten you know, into crypto in college. I was at the time uh, reading you know, white papers about you know, protocols that were coming out. And I was really curious about learning more and at the time, I met um, one of the co-founders of Ethereum, uh, Joe Lubin, uh, who had actually started a venture production studio out of Bushwick in New York. Um, because the technology was so new when the company was started, which was about 2015, 2016, uh, the model was really try to build things and see what sticks, uh, see what developer tooling is needed in order for people to actually start building on top of this new technology. 
Um, and I found the company really interesting because it allowed a lot of people with very different backgrounds uh, to come together and contribute to the technology. Um, I stayed with the business for about three years at the time, um, did a ton of research. I was uh, involved in leading strategic partnerships and also ventures within the company. Um, and for me, my focus was really figuring out what the next big thing was going to be that would help the technology uh, continue to evolve. At the time, Ethereum was going through a major upgrade. And as I mentioned before, there's these two security systems, proof of work and proof of stake. And Ethereum was going through that transition exactly at that time. And as you can think, a, a live network that needs an upgrade across thousands of different computers at the same time is really a difficult thing to coordinate. And so yes, was at the time already starting to build different um, ideas of things that you know I thought would be very important for the industry as this migration was happening, as it would open up a lot of new product opportunities. Um, at the time, I'd started research on a venture um, that my partner actually ended up you know, turning into a business that I still sit on the board of today. Um, but also got really excited about staking as one of the mechanisms that really cements the security model of blockchains um, and, and what lives underneath them. At the time, I was really keen to learn from some amazing founders, and I met uh, Joe and Aaron, who had started a company called Bison Trails. At the time, they were you know, becoming the leading blockchain infrastructure provider in the space, and I ended up you know, leading our business team and you know, helping our growth. And fast enough, we got acquired by Coinbase, which is a, a fairly large company in this space. Um, and you know, as part of that acquisition, we ended up building a very AWS-style model inside of the company, where we realized that there was a ton of value in empowering other businesses and other companies and institutions to offer crypto services to their users. And so infrastructure services, payment services, data services became part of that product suite that became known as Coinbase Cloud. Very cool. Now, what made you think, you know, this is it, I'm going to take the dive into entrepreneurship myself and then go out and start a totally new company? Um, I think it, in, in the hindsight, it felt very intuitive. I had started writing about what our company today ultimately does around 2020. Um, at the time, you know, the promise of being able to build B2B SaaS in the blockchain infrastructure market was emerging. And so there was an opportunity that was you know, ripe to be developed and worked on. One of the things within Coinbase, our origin story being a quite unique one, because we spun out of different businesses to form our company, and that's a quite atypical way to start a business that is early stage. One of the things that we realized when thinking about how do we create the most value in this open network by providing these services, and the answer for us was very simple, it has to be interoperable. And for it to be interoperable, you need loads of different market participants and players to build and to buy into a model that is inherently collaborative. There are a few examples of businesses that were built that way, and Visa is probably one of the most prominent and successful examples. And a lot of people actually don't know the story of Visa, but Visa was a company that was actually built in collaboration with different merchant banks, competing companies that were brought together by uh, a man called Dehawk, who wrote incredible books about the process of getting all of these competing companies to sit around the same table. And it's a quite challenging thing to do. Mm -hmm. We think in many ways it's the thing that creates a collaborative advantage for us. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it's something extremely difficult to do from within any given company. Uh, you want to build that foundation that is neutral, that is collective, where incentives are aligned for different participants um, to contribute to that business. And so our founding story is actually my co-founder, Matt, coming from a competing company, myself, and from Coinbase with a lot of you know, team members that, that I'd worked with before, and then another company called Kraken, which is one of the biggest exchanges in the space. We all came together um, to you know, effectively fund and start that business, and that was really exciting. Interesting. Now, I want to know exactly, I know you said it's a B2B company, who are your users, who are your customers, and how many do you have? Yeah, so as a B2B business, we effectively have built a product that is enterprise grade. We focus heavily on security, and so the companies that we sell to today are mostly you know, crypto native businesses, large exchanges, custodians, and fintechs that are looking into the space. Today we have platform integrations with over nine different platforms, including market leaders like Coinbase, BitGo, Anchorage, Fireblocks, Copper, uh, and others, uh, which we're really excited about because those businesses effectively have integrated our product into the backend services of their 
product suites and can offer that to their customer bases, which in some cases are institutional clients and in other cases are retail customers. So how do you get you know, Coinbase and all these competing uh, marketplaces to buy in to you know, collaboratively come together and support your product? It's one of the really interesting challenges, um, but also in some ways, I think, a moat for us because it's a hard thing to do. When we think about what the value proposition is of our product, it's to ensure that different market participants and different users can access this technology and really participate inside of blockchains in a really easy and secure manner. For us, it was very clear that in order to accomplish that, building with network effects, making sure that you know, there's accessibility across a very broad range of solutions is very important. Because of our origin story, we were very fortunate to have found early partners. I mean, at the time, I was actually still working at Coinbase when we you know, conceptualized this and pitched it to the executive team. Um, but I think there, there was, it resonated with participants that were trying to fix a problem that they had seen for their customers and an opportunity space that was really compelling. And one of the good things when you think about these collaborative models is once you have the first three, four, five, maybe six partners around the table, it becomes incrementally easier to build that buy-in, to build that collective, you know, cohesive positioning in the market. And one of the things that we found very effective and also why we decided to build on this model is that a lot of the work that has to be done in crypto today is also being progressive and being upfront about advocacy on the policy side. And so there's a shared incentive for different market leaders to come together and say, hey, this technology is really important. This particular feature is really important to support networks more holistically. Why don't we work on this together and you know, really drive forward the policy discourse of different jurisdictions? Interesting. So how are you different than you know, all the rest of the other staking providers that are out there today? What sets you apart? I would say our collaborative advantage. Um, we've been built and integrated as a B2B business with different platforms. Our focus has been really on security, enterprise grade uh, diversification, and a compliance focused design. And I think that's probably one of the most important distinguishers of how we look at the market. It's hard to build for a market segment that is still emerging because it requires you to take an inherently long-term view on the market, especially when you think about the types of market players that we anticipate to start really actively participating, like traditional banks, right? That might still be a couple of years out on the adoption curve. Interesting. Now, quickly tell me about your fundraising journey. How much have you raised and what has that afforded you and your company? For sure, so we raised our first seed round um, in August of 2022. We raised capital from our early partners, so we didn't take any VC funding at that early you know, point in time. We raised $6.2 million then uh, with collaboration and participation from Coinbase, Kraken, and Figment. We later raised a Series A uh, in June of last year. That was a $12 million round that allowed us to really focus on our growth and expanding some of our strategic footprint with partners in major geographies. Our investors in the round included Ethereal and Varian, who led the round, but we also brought in strategic institutional capital from Brevin Howard and Avon Ventures, uh, a subsidiary of Fidelity. And so that was really important for us in order to continue expanding our footprint in the market, to have strategic partners in different jurisdictions, um, but also to you know, have the capital to continue building and innovating on top of the product that we had launched in the market. Very cool. Now, does the volatile nature of you know, crypto and Ethereum ever, ever worry you, or how are you looking at, at the market? Having worked in the space for a couple of years now, I think you get used to it. Um, market cycles being quite short and close together in crypto can be really distracting for builders and for companies. And I've seen more often than not that these cycles can be you know, quite challenging for businesses to navigate. I think one of the consequences of working in the space like this is that you become inherently quite resilient and also naturally gravitate towards a long-term focus that ensures that when all the noise around you continues to happen, you can really you know, center yourself around the mission and the vision that you have for your business. Excellent, and final question for you, what would you like your legacy to be? Um, I think I would love to um, bring more founders into the space. I found that one of the things that has been incredibly rewarding in this journey is actually supporting and investing in other founders, especially those that are really early stage um, and trying to navigate the space. I would love to see more women in the space. Um, one of the things that really you know, 
as, as part of my journey when I was about 24, I think was the first time I found something I was really excited about. And I said, you know what, someone should really build this, but who's gonna give me any money, mm -hmm. right? Truthfully. Yeah. Um, and I would love to be able to build confidence in this generation, but also generations that come after, that it's absolutely something that you can do and you should have the confidence and ability to go after it. That is a great goal, especially in a space where there's so few women. So that is excellent. Well, thank you so much for sitting with me. Awesome, it was great, thank you. Awesome.